All right, guys, you're gonna have to forgive me for filming in the garage, shooting from the garage outside. I'm shooting through my back door out into the lawn. It's just the only way I could deal with the rain and some of the conditions I have outside. It's really noisy out right now, and I really needed to show you something. This is the Seneca by Air Venturi uh, Dragonfly Mark II. And so this is very newly released. Uh, in fact, a lot of places you still can't get it. It's not in stock just yet. But this is a really neat rifle. I have it in 177. And as soon as I got it, a couple things I wanted to do. Uh, the number one thing I wanted to do is I saw that this was threaded. And so what I did is I got my uh, buck rail silencer. And I'm going to tell you guys, the first thing you need to do if you're buying one of these, at the same time, head over to buck rail and just buy the suppressor for this. Um, this does have a converter on there. You could put more than one type on there. But this one right here, I think it's a half, one, a one half UNF. I'll have to go ahead and post that down below. I'll give you a link to the one that's going to work with this. This is fantastic. I'll go ahead and take um, maybe a couple shots without it and then throw this on. It's not a super loud gun by itself. I'm pretty impressed with that. But with this, it doesn't make any sound. It is so wicked quiet. So I'm going to go ahead and take a few shots with iron sights. You guys know that I don't play around with iron sights a whole lot. And I, in fact, I wanted to take this, this off immediately when I got it. And uh, I thought, well, some people are going to want to see how does it group. So I've got a target out at 33 yards. Um, I do have some Norma ammo. This is Norma. It's kind of a newer ammo to me. I've never tried it. I've never tried it in this gun at all. This is the first time I'm trying it, so we'll find out together. I'm going to go ahead and pump it up and just kind of talk to you about it a little bit. This is not a review. I'm just using it and telling you about it. The only thing that I know for sure is that this combination goes really, really well together. Uh, another thing you might consider is you can see I put on a piece of Picatinny rail and I do that on everything. I would have put on an Arca rail, but it doesn't have enough width. Uh, I prefer an Arca rail over Picatinny, but that worked nicely enough. The wood sustains the screw pretty well or holds the screw in there real well. A couple things to notice when you cock it like that and you have your safety on, you first break it open. It's kind of tough to break open. Um, much, tar much harder to open it than it is to pump it, ironically. And so after you go about here, you'll hear it fill. And then you can bring it down to about here and stop. So you don't have to go all the way closed. In fact, I recommend that you don't go all the way closed. So there's one, two, three, four, five. I'll do six pumps for these. Again, I'm just going to double check this. I moved my target, but I'm pretty sure this is right at 33 yards. Okay, it's 34, 34 yards right now. 34 yards. This rangefinder, by the way, laser rangefinder by Vortex, um, it's pretty good. I'm going to talk about that in another video. And I think I'll take my microphone off for this so you don't hear a bunch of the rattle. I'll go ahead and take three shots and maybe just show you the target with uh, no can on there. And then I'll throw a can on, take three shots so you can get the audio and also see uh, if the point of impact changes or anything like that. Again, I've never shot this ammo through uh, this gun or with the can on. So I have no idea how that's going to um, interact with each other. We'll find out together. Trigger is pretty creepy. Not too loud though, really not too bad. As far as pumping it goes, it is night and day between my Benjamin 397S. It is so easy to pump this. It's strange, actually. It doesn't feel like you're doing anything. It's definitely something behind the technology for sure. All right, there's three. I'm gonna go grab the target. We'll take a look. All right, so real briefly, uh, one, two, and three. And I'm not sure why that one is down lower. I've never tried this ammo combination, so I had no idea what kind of groups it produced. And honestly, three or five shot groups are hardly enough to know. But 
for a guy with poor vision, I have relatively poor vision, and I even struggled to see this down there, to be honest with you. This right here is fine. That's fine. I would have liked to see that one up here. I think there's probably potential. I'll keep playing around with it. Maybe not so much with iron sights. I prefer just putting an optic on it right away, and I'm going to go that direction. But now I'll go ahead and uh, mark these hits, and then I'll throw three down with a can on it, and we'll see if there's any shift in uh, point of impact. So Buckrail is a sponsor of the channel, but I want to tell you guys something. I have been using this stuff since Gen 1, Gen 1 silencers, and I still do on some of my other guns. And before uh, we ever had any you know, connection and I had any affiliate stuff, this is the stuff I was running anyways. I got this stuff. This is just the updated versions. I'm trying to tell you guys, this is really, really good stuff. And we'll see how these interact together with this new ammo. But I predict it's going to work just as well, if not better. I even had one rifle where I put that on and I got better results. I got better accuracy. So just something to consider. I'm going to go ahead and take three shots now with the can on. It's really easy to pump. I'm telling you, this is just so smooth. There's three. All right, so what you're looking at there is one, two, three. It's a two inch group, so not too good. Um, even with iron sights for me, not too good. Now I have really poor vision. That's one thing I would like to mention right off the bat. I have pretty poor vision, and especially with my right eye, it should be my dominant eye, but it, it's poor. And I'm not shooting in a well-lit place. So there's a few excuses out of the way, but actually they're legitimate excuses. I just don't want you thinking that's the best that this gun can do, or that this is an attempt at a review. It's not. I'm just using the gun. I'm just testing it really for the first time myself with a few different combinations. The thing that I can be absolutely sure of is if you're going to buy this gun, get a buck rail silencer, uh, moderator, LDC, whatever you call it. This is a cool combination. Maybe consider getting yourself, you know, a decent Atlas bipod and putting on a Picatinny or find a way to put an arc rail on there. I think that's pretty cool. I can just go real quickly with my initial impression shooting the gun less than 100 times at this point. My initial impression is the stock is a little bit short, it's a little bit low, unless you're going to leave it with iron sights. Even then, I think it's just a tad low. The uh, bolt itself is decent. It's very small, but it's decent. It seems to be uh, machined well enough. It's not real bad. The rail portion is incredibly small, and this portion that is like foundational to getting a forward piece on the, um, like to get a mount for optics. This forward piece here has some Allens on top of it, which I'm assuming retain the barrel. And so that design right there, ouch, that's kind of a bad idea. You have Allens right in the way. So anytime you wanna mess with something, you will be taking your optic off if you put it on there. If you can manage to even get an optic on a piece of rail that is this small, it is so incredibly small. I think this was a, a gigantic astronomic oversight by uh, Air Venturi to produce a rail that's almost unusable, unless you're using your bug buster scope, which I think uh, is kind of a joke. Um, you know, it's a $200 rifle. At this point, let's just put a proper rail on there and Picatinny would have been nice, but I even could have survived dovetail that went up another two inches. And pretty much everybody on the internet is saying the same thing. By the way, the height of the dovetail for the uh, rear sight here is not the same height as this. That's another huge oversight. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I don't have the magazine loaded up right now. I will in the future, especially when I throw an optic on here. I will get an optic on here. I'm going to show you how I'm going to make that work for me. And I think I'll shoot really tight groups. My guess is I'll be able to do it. The trigger itself, I like the width of the trigger right off the bat. Um, the distance for the length of pull and you know, kind of setting up my thumb in a consistent way, it's not bad. The trigger itself is spongy and it has some creep to it for sure. It's almost like there's a second stage where you can kind of feel where something is coming, but I would not say that this is a crisp trigger. I've, I've heard some people say already that this is a crisp trigger, and it's not. That is absolutely not the case, and it definitely has over-travel, so I'm going to go ahead and drill out the back here and through, then throw uh, a screw into the back to keep it from over-traveling and see if I can help with the follow-through there, uh, because you definitely will disturb your sight picture 
if you don't have a good over travel protection. The next thing I would comment on, just move this a little sideways, is this right here does ma not match up nice. It's not level. And uh, pretty much the first time I crack this thing open uh, to pump it, this right here, I just noticed it, it doesn't blend nicely at all. It's a little unlevel. This actually doesn't mate up nice um, pretty much at all. Moving on down, uh, the fiber optic front sight, it's probably a good idea. Black rear sights, you know, decent enough, but polymer, nothing that I'm going to brag about at all. The barrel band seems fine. Uh, you know, it's kind of complemented by the front here. This has a type of barrel band and then like some C-clips that go around there. Sorry, some fireworks going on down the street. And so the barrel is not free, free floated, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, the wood itself seems nice. It actually seems like a nice uh, quality wood. I, I think it looks like a pretty good piece all around. Yeah, I like that well enough. The adapter on the end, so you could put two kinds, you could thread on two different um, types of cans on the end if you want to. That seems like a pretty good idea. I think this right here and the magazine capability, some of the better things going on for this 177. I think that's one of the things that's going to draw a lot of people to it more than likely. Uh, I can tell you that the, the pumping of it, yes, it actually does seem to be very consistent. It's extremely easy. You just have to remember that little truck trick, uh, rather, that you don't have to go all the way back up when you're pumping it. But I just want to give you guys a first impression. This is not a review. I certainly would not film a high-quality review in the setting it's in. This is just me hanging out, having some fun with something I just got. And uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that iron sight off, and I'm going to go ahead and just put an optic on there. Maybe I'll throw in a couple clips of that in the same video. Maybe not. I don't know. You guys have a happy 4th of July, and go ahead and check this out, especially Buckrail.